Hey there, it is Wednesday hump day. We do not have a Hawaiian word for hump day. It's hump day. We're going to make it to, I don't know about you guys, this week is turning into be crazy. And uh, so we'll give a few minutes. We're going to let people work their way in so I can get some hot in there. And in a second, we'll bring up Miss Sleuth. Let me shut up the dogs for a few seconds. Hey, Cassie, would you please like to take a treat? Yeah, stop yapping. This is why I'm saying when people are talking about small dogs, they're loud. Thank God for Chris. So, um, but anyhow, welcome, 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 guys. Uh, we have a couple of you who were in chat early and, uh, and more who will probably come in as notifications get out, but I'm gonna first pull up so we can both say hi to you at the same time. Miss Sleuth. Hello, Sleuth Mom. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good to see you guys. We can see you. Hi, now, right? I love it. I love it. And also, oh, well, that's great. No, I love it when I can see people so much. <laughs> you get to see the face. Yeah. So, but how are you doing, my dear? I know you're busy sharing out and all that. Right I am. Now, yes. I'm yes. doing really good. How are you? Good. Good. Okay. I'll stop barking. Got auditions tonight, but let's see. So we had someone who was in chat from the time I put the word out, and that is patriotism. By the way, I didn't get to say this before. I love that name. I love that name, patriotism. My mom will go crazy over that name. So hello, hello, my dear. And yes, Cassie, there you go. Click and go in the house. Hello, y'all. Howdy. Hello. And Miss Gia. And there you Dina, Seal in the house. Seal and I were just, I don't know about you, Sleuth, but it's like, Sebastian, there's so much going on with Sebastian right now and so much misinformation and this and that. And There is. Yeah. And, and one crazy. thing that I do want to say is that mm -hmm. Seth just did a, I think it's like a minute and a half, two minute video um, with the news. They are just honestly begging for searchers at this point. Like if you guys are in that area, if you know people in that area, um, if you, whatever, just yeah. share it out and, and try to get some searchers out there. I guess they had a very That's low good. response this morning. And I know that a lot of that comes from the drama about the they Cajun Navy it. and things like that. Um, yeah. You know, the back and forth about is, are they a 5013C? Are they not a 5013C? Are they searching? Are they not searching? You know what the details are behind that. Um, I can verify that they are a 5013C. Yeah. But regardless, if they're going out there and holding search parties, uh, this is a missing person, you know. And so please attend these search parties and yep. try to get, get people out there to look for Sebastian. Yeah. I personally do not think that they are going to find Sebastian. Um, I personally exactly. think that he is missing somewhere that he can return home. And yeah. that means that he's not going to be in the woods. Um, yeah. However, the searches need done to verify that, you know? Yeah. So that's well, kind of where and we're that's at. the thing. No, and that's the thing right now. Okay. When people are being look, looking for them. Okay. Part of it is it's like, should we be looking? Should we not? That does get a certain thought in our head. Right. But once they say, yes, look. That's when all of this talking that all of us do out here, I know so many of us have no choice. I can't just jump on a plane and fly over. I don't have that. None of us have that ability. We have jobs. We have kids. We have dogs who won't shut up. And uh, we have no choice. But for those who are nearby, those who can jump in a car, carpool with other people, go help. It's not about a organization right now. It's yeah, exactly. Sebastian. And, um, all. and yeah, I think you're right. And I think we've seen the articles of kids who do with autism who have come home even years later. And I hope that's not what it comes down to. But right. he's out there. Yeah. There is also, um, if you don't mind, there is a missing yeah. flyer also that I wouldn't mind if yes. you shared. Um, yes. I can send it to you on Facebook or I can just share my screen. Okay. It's up to you. Share your screen. I'm fine okay. with that. No problem. And um, whoa, where'd it go? So I was talking well, to someone doing, yeah. about this earlier today, and mm -hmm. this is, oh. I'm going to say some quick hi while you're sharing out. We got Cooter in the house. 
And let's see, the clicking goes. Yeah, Sebastian Cuda. needs prayers. <laughs> Cuda, 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 Cuda. And Hi, Chicken Lady Hi, has chicken a lady. little baby chick now. Her chick uh, picked through, and we got a new baby little chick over there now. That's in awesome. The bushes. Oh, I love watching these chicks, guys. It's so much fun, gang. Um, and also, Miss in the Bushes. And Cassie, will you get it up? Oh, my gosh. What a drama queen you are. You would fit really well in YouTube land, wouldn't you, Cass? Uh-huh. Between you and your brother and mom. So. That should be backstage. I'm waiting for you to. Okay. Sorry. Perfect, perfect. Per oh, I got to go down a little. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is Paige Olivia Burke. She is 17 years old. She's missing in Apache Junction, Arizona. Um, so this is concerning because she did leave her home during the night of yesterday during the night of yesterday um on march 26th they believe that she may still be in the area but she has uh her phone with her but she turned off all of her parental tracking apps and she has not accessed okay. anything for them to be able to pin her location and so anytime that we talk about these teenagers you know that are missing it, it becomes concerning because where did they go who did they go there with and what was the reasoning behind them leaving um, so her family is extremely concerned up until this point. They they never had any red flags that would lead to her running away, they're saying. Um, and so so they're really concerned, basically, uh, and mm -hmm. need her picture shared out there and her face everywhere. So just wanted to take a second to do that. No, thank you. We'll definitely keep that one out there. And uh, yeah, important with those because all these cases, whether they've gone off with someone else or gone off to get some time alone as a teenager, just clean their mind, whatever, they're in danger right now. And right. if not, just call home. Call home. Let them know where you are, what's going on. And uh, it's just so important because it just takes that one person that we get connected with and we don't really know who they are, to be honest. And also... Uh, uh, and that's kind of this case. Okay, I'm going to uh, actually, uh, should I close the poll out yet or not? Let's see what it's right now. In the poll, we're at four to or 10 minutes in, well, three minutes in, so maybe not. If you have not participated in the poll yet, uh, please do that. I would love to hear just how much you guys know, because like Smooth Mom has not watched what we're going to watch today. I did, and I watched it last night. But how much do you know about Caleb's disappearance? We've talked about it a few times here. Um, not in depth for probably about a week or two weeks, actually, maybe at this point. Um, do you know, and you've been following, you're in the groups, things like that. Are you like, I kind of know, okay, I've seen the posters for him. I knew there was a second uh, college student missing, male college student missing. Or are you like, oh no i never heard this person's name i didn't know there was another because i think there's a lot of people who fall in that category too mm -hmm. so and uh, no so, and i agree and yeah. i mean even myself to be completely honest um mm -hmm. outside of what i heard in between work while you were covering it and in between work while mallory was covering it malicious intent you guys are the only two people that i have i, I don't know if i'm just not looking for the coverage but you're the only two people that I've seen in depth, like dive into his case. Right. Um, there have been people who have shared his flyers and things like that. But as far as like an in-depth deep dive, um, that's it. So my my knowledge in general is this big. <laughs> you know, like it's yeah, it's very little. So I, I'm uh, eager to hear this interview. I know about the obviously the short that you posted with his last video mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, right. but that's about it. it it's very that's mysterious to me, like where in the world he could have gone. 17 minutes and that's one thing that okay we're actually going to watch yesterday's uh, video uh that nancy grace did she did a really second really wonderful video in two days about these cases and she has dad there as well as a couple other people on panel and they've got it down 17 minute window that this guy went missing in the middle of the night it's not a kid who they thought oh yeah he'd been having problems or things this is a guy who was literally planning to go fishing the next afternoon and was talking to people about what lures he should take fishing. Right. So he, yeah, there's nothing with this whatsoever. So before we start, just wanted to pull this up real quick. This is Caleb. This is who we're going to talk about today. 
I am going to keep his picture up in the corner up there throughout this um, video. However, here's his poster. Um, he did go missing on March 4th, the very, very early morning hours of March 4th. Like Sleuth Mom said, I actually did share out the short of the last video he was in, which is a surveillance video in the parking lot as they took their dog out. Uh, Maltese actually looks like Maltese, just like my guys and someone else on this right now on panel with me also has the same type of dog, right, my dear? And <laughs> we all have Maltese, don't we? But um, he's been out. Okay, he's in Corpus Christi from New Braunfels, Texas. Um, and there's no sign of him. He went missing with his phone. Again, no shoes. We have another case of someone who went missing without shoes on. Um, and all these cases, unfortunately, happened at the same time. Sebastian, Elijah, Riley, and Caleb. And I'm sure thousands of others, unfortunately. It's weird to me how it's happening, though. Because if you think about it, like, we've been back-to-back -back with cases since about mid-January. It's been nonstop. Yes. yes. Like, and, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Children go missing every single day. But I'm talking cases that have some type of foul play, some type of mystery mystery behind it, um, and yeah. like a lot of information to dig into in oh. order to be able to actually cover them on this platform, right? Yep. In a in a way that's more than just us reading a flyer. So that's right. that's interesting to me. That's a good way to put it because that's what something both of us have had. A lot of other people have problems. You want to cover people, but so many times all you have is what you see on a poster. You don't have that background. There's background in all these cases, which should make it easier to find the answer to. So someone has a chihuahua, Gia has a chihuahua and a pug. And yes, chicken lady, very handsome young man, very handsome young man. So let me go ahead. I'm going to pull this down and switch us to dear old Nancy. And we're going to go through this. If you guys want to stop and chat, let us know. Um, I should have closed captioning on for you guys, but it'll be on this way anyhow. So we should be fine on here. We go. How can just 20 minutes change your whole life? How does a boy step outside barefoot to get his Uber Eats and he's never seen again? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, take a listen to Rachel Bonilla. When Caleb Harris's roommates begin their day, they open the front door to find the Uber Eats food Caleb had ordered still at the door. The roommates started looking for Harris. At 11 a.m., the roommates file a missing person report with police and notify Texas A&M Corpus Christi Campus Security as well that Harris is missing. At 3 p.m., parents Randy and Becky Harris are told their son is missing. Randy Harris headed straight for Corpus Christi. And what does Randy Harris, Caleb's dad, have to say about this? Listen. This is not normal. This is not, this, this is a different situation where, you know, Caleb disappeared, vanished. Just so many things that just don't add up, especially at three in the morning, you know. But he was planning a lot of stuff. It wasn't like he, he wasn't going anywhere. I mean, he, he was planning stuff. So that's what is, is odd about the whole case. Mm -hmm. This young A&M student is gone, seemingly see vanished into thin air. And we all know something is off. When you order Instacart or yeah. Uber or DoorDash, your food doesn't sit on your front porch all night long for your roommates to find it the next morning. There is a critical 20 minutes, critical 17. 20 minutes that this boy scrubbed in sunshine disappeared. With me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. Yeah, Where concept. is yeah. Caleb? Voila. So, okay. so before we get too far into this, so, so he ordered the DoorDash went out to get it and disappeared. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Okay. So, and we'll kind of get into this there. Initially we were told, oh, he went out to walk his dog 
and he ordered his food for the next day. So we thought it was like a delivery service for food. But in reality, he put the dog out to go potty, brought the back dog back in. He ordered from Door, uh, Uber Eats his food for the next day. And they go through that here, but basically it's like a monster, a Red Bull bowl um, and some food for lunch. So mm -hmm. they were going to deliver. And the person they've talked to the person, we're going to hear them talk about the girl who delivered it. In the meantime, from the time he ordered it to the time it appeared, he disappeared. And so his, I'm, I'm going to assume that his mm -hmm. roommates didn't know of him, like going out to meet anybody. He wasn't like, you know, I, I don't even, I don't know anything about his background. So I'm just going to ask like the obvious questions. Like, could he have been going out to get something from somebody else outside of the car, like walking out of this house to meet somebody for something, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, whether it's a, you know, I don't know, anything. Um, or right. like, is there any evidence of that? Like if they had checked his phone to see if he was going out to meet someone? The phone, they are going through. There's a lot of concerns about the phone. In fact, one of the people they have here is a cyber technician to kind of explain because even the timeline is kind of weird because of pinging. The phone okay. actually, yeah, we're going to find out. Basically, the phone shuts down and then it's pinged again after it shuts down. So something weird happened there and that could just be technology and the way things are. As for roommates and all that, he had three people in his, his apartment with him. This was off-campus housing. Um, one of them was going back home, was visiting a, um, I think girlfriend or something and was actually heading back out to go home. I maybe to San Antonio. I'm not totally hundred okay. percent sure on that. But a lot of my questions about like the phone and the pinging and stuff, that's going to be answered during this then. Bingo. You got okay. it. You got Fantastic. it. And by the hi way, B we do have a couple. I was going to say, left. hi, B Tim. Hi, Mallory. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Nicole. We got Miss, ba oh, we got Cat Mama too. Cat Mama in the house. Mal, B Tim, Cristola. Um, who else? Yeah, I have not seen what she did today. I will have to check that out later on today. So, the last two lives she's done on missing people, I do appreciate those two things. So, yeah, here Hi, we go. Right off the bat, I want to go straight out to Caleb's dad, but first, I want to give you a tip line. 361-886-2840. There is a reward. Repeat, 361-886-2840. And now to kill his father, Randy Harris, joining us. Mr. Harris, thank you for being with us. I, I can't even yeah. imagine what you are going through, you and your wife. My son went missing inside a giant Babies or Us warehouse store when he was about mm, three, and just those moments until I find found him, I, I'll never forget it the rest of my life. And you have been living with this since Caleb seemingly disappeared on a foggy night. I want to start at the beginning with you. When did you find out something was wrong? Um, well, we text back and forth quite a bit. And so, you know, the next morning, Typical Monday morning, maybe he slept in late, whatever, and getting ready for school around 1030. And so no big deal. And then we got a call from the roommates. Uh, they called my wife. One thing I do want to bring up real quickly, um, canine, yes. During this, they do say that it was a neighbor. And we're going to get into that, that there was a person who actually saw the Uber Eats car. However, one of the people who was in the room was also someone who had to go back. So there's been some question, could they have been the same person maybe? Or were they two separate people? A lot of questions on that. Um, also, and it does not state this in here, Sleuth Mom. I had to think about it for a second. Um, of the others, um, one went over into another apartment with a girlfriend, and then the third person was sleeping on the couch at the time all this happened. So that kind of covers the three people that. Would so there was somebody relatively around. close to the front door. I'm assuming then that Sleeping would have heard the if there was like a a scuffle outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And outside, not only did the Uber Eats person get interviewed, but someone who saw the Uber Eats car 
also was interviewed. So they've been able okay. to cover at least two people during, driving around at that time. So, uh, hello, Thea. How are you doing, my dear? Okay, dokes. And uh, she immediately called me. I was working south of town. And so uh, I got down here as quick as I can. And that kind of started everything off with uh, meeting with the police again. They were they were there within five minutes of me arriving and, you know, took took the report again for the and uh, immediately raised it to a, a, a missing persons. Guys, you're seeing shots of Caleb. What an outdoorsman. He is out there fishing, camping. There he is at getting stuff from Cabela's, which he loved. How could he just vanish? What do we know? Tell me some more about Caleb. He's a student at A&M. What is he studying? Where does he live? What year is he in school? Uh, two and a half years into school. Uh, he's studying environmental science. Uh, definitely just absolutely loves the outdoors, loves fishing, loves hunting. Uh, really got into duck hunting the last couple of years and, uh, you know, just loves all the clothes, wants to be sponsored. He's going to um, get his kayak guide license uh, to be able to help people that buy kayaks that really don't know what, how to outfit them and what to put on them and what to do. And so uh, his, you know, he's going to do that, uh, getting ready to go to uh, work in Colorado this summer. Um, just a lot of stuff. Uh, he had texted me. Going to stop that real quickly because he did make a mistake right there. And he, um, oh, he, yeah, I think he does correct it. He's actually going to be going up to Alaska to work this summer. And oh, that's also, crazy. Yeah. So this, this kid has everything going for him. This is not one of those cases where you're like, oh gosh, okay. Maybe they were having a rough time. Okay. School grades, mental health, whatever nothing whatsoever here he's part of a he came from new Braunfels, which is fairly okay pretty close um very small school um just a really good well, yeah it's nothing it's just another one of those situations where you see this college kid that had absolutely everything ahead of him mm -hmm. so what would be his purpose for running away and that's that's where the mystery of foul play or something like that comes into it it reminds me um honestly of naomi Erion because she went missing doing seemingly harmless activities like she was right. just sitting in the walmart parking lot waiting for her ride to to work you know what i mean and so yep. it, it doesn't make sense whenever it's these people who who are doing the right thing and, and and not to say anything bad about like riley but riley was engaging in semi-risky behavior because he was out right. partying right. A, a near a river you know what i mean whereas this yeah. guy just was getting Nothing. some food yeah <laughs> he was, was none and eat. yeah and K-9, they, the Uber Eats driver who was um, sent out to him was actually a female. So, in fact, Nancy Grace, as soon as she hears that, she's like, okay, yeah. I don't see Nancy, okay, a female being involved in kidnapping him or anything Not like that. Not that females now, can't kidnap it could people. Be, it However, could be. he looks like a strong, strapping yeah. young man. Exactly. You know what I mean? Unless someone in the car, but she's been cleared. Also, mm -hmm. Amy, just so you know, um, no, they have not found him yet. Um, Nancy Grace did a interview with dad yesterday and a whole panel, which is what we're watching right now. So we could get some update. Um, yeah, he had everything going on. Um, so far, we're not hearing about ransom. At least we're not being told there's anything about ransom here. Um, but it's yeah, this one, there's no inkling what's going on. Let's see. That evening, you know, some fishing lures he's going to use the next day. He's very methodical about species of fish he's going to go fish like for. Bob Ross just coloring book. Throw a shrimp on a hook. Uh, very, very um, calculated of what he's going to do. And uh, that's that. Hey, Kay, love you, my dear. Sorry, I forgot to call. I have been. Yeah, Sleuth knows this. I have been jammed nonstop. Love you, my dear. And on sending you prayers, my dear. Hope you feel um, well soon, KK. Yeah. We're all thinking of you. That was, yeah. That was the night before, and he was ready to go the next day, and uh, <laughs> then he vanished. To Dr. Jeff uh, Kalashevsky joining us, forensic psychologist, author of Dark Sides. Uh, you can find him on YouTube at Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky. Dr. Jeff, thank you for being with us. You know, when someone just seemingly walks away into the fog, we wonder why. That's not what happened here. He didn't just walk away. Uh, 
think about it, Dr. Jeff. Somebody doesn't order their DoorDash or their Uber Eats and just decide, hey, I'm going to walk out into nowhere. That didn't happen. He was excited yeah. about fishing the next morning, about his plans to move to Colorado for a job over the summer. I mean, look at this guy. No sign ever of depression, of any kind of emotional problem, great grades. Just she just answered what I was going to ask. Doctor. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was it, literally she's... just thinking, like, I wonder if he had, like, a mental break of some sort yeah. or if he was depressed or sad or failing or, you know what I mean? Like, something along those lines. But even so, if you're going to if you're going to unalive yourself or do something along those lines, why would you order dinner first? You Bingo. know what I mean? Um, so Bingo. That's, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're, they break it down to 17 minutes. Okay, you're not going to call. Nancy Grace is always like, I mean, I know some people really don't like Nancy Grace. Yeah. And I'm not going to say she's my favorite person in the world. But man, her brain thinks so much like a sleuth because she's been doing this for so mm-hmm. long. She's got all the questions already set up. She does. She does go off on this poor guy in a few minutes. He literally oh. was just trying to cover options out there. And she goes off on him. I, I actually get the, felt bad. The hair attacking people. <laughs> Gotta get all oh, sassy. Oh, <laughs> yes. I was like, he's like, no, I'm not trying to say that. And all that. Mm-hmm. Go, oh, it's cut. It's so funny. Uh, K9. A lot of people thought they were walking the dog, but it turned out it was just kind of putting the dog out to go potty and then letting it back in. It wasn't really a walk per se. That was one of the things a lot of us were confused about initially also. So, okay, here we go. Living the life. Look at him there, out hiking. This guy did not disappear on his own. I would stake everything on it. Yeah. Right. In cases like this, a lot of times, right, people wonder about suicide. But it's the idea that you rule a lot of these things out. If there aren't mental health issues, if there aren't a history of um, significant impulsive behavior, then you wonder about accidents. Those happen, too. Um, mm-hmm. I've lived in college mm-hmm. towns where there, it seems like the I same mean. accidents happen at the same place around these towns. For example, kids falling in the river. So that is a potential option. And then what it what what it would leave after that was the possibility of some type of abduction or kidnapping. Unfortunately, Dr. Jeff so, Kalashevsky, can I can I just stop you right I, now? Sorry, okay. I just wonder though. Did his roommate say anything about him having? Like, um, I don't want to say enemies, but like, you know, did he have any recent disagreements with anyone or anybody nothing that would we're like being to told about him? Yeah, okay. nothing we're being told. We do know that earlier in the day he had been playing games with friends. Oh, okay. okay. So computer, computer games. And they were, instead of talking via headset and all, they were talking via phone while they were playing. So hmm. he had been doing that. Right. Um, he had planned on the next day they were going to go fishing and he was sending out all these messages. Interesting, his last photo, and we're going to get to see a picture of the last photo that was sent out to anyone. Mm-hmm. And it's literally the bridge outside of where they are. And it's not like a bridge like we're thinking about. OK, it's okay. not like a big issue there. They would right. have found him there. Um, okay. But it was really foggy, extremely foggy. Mm-hmm. And so my mom's like, why would he send that? And I'm like, good question. Why would you send this type of photo? And I'm thinking, well, maybe it was just how cloudy it was, a foggy it was or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. You guys in chat have some great comments going. I'm loving this. No, for real. They do. Oh, they do. So I so agree, cool. Dina. Nancy is good at what she does, but she also goes overboard sometimes. Definitely an acquired taste. I feel like that that is a realm that any single one of us can get into right yeah. like my mom was saying to me um earlier today she was like you know sometimes you get like ranting and i just don't yeah. even know who you are and i'm like i mean <laughs> really mom like you know that <laughs> you know my never. capabilities <laughs> like but she she pointed that out to me the other day that like yeah. on some of these cases like i get so passionate that yeah. it just it does it goes overboard and yeah, so that's yeah. that's something that like we have to kind of call out and and watch. But at the same time, does Nancy Nancy's production team is probably like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like <laughs> and how much of that is to get it going? Like here, right. she jumps. Honestly, she sometimes I've caught her where she'll be talking and listening to someone, 
and she jumps on something before listening to the whole comment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what happens here. But on the other hand, we know how, I don't want to say drama per se, like we see drama. It sells, yeah. But it's entertainment. You got to have right. some level of entertainment or people don't want to watch. To be no, honest. that's true. That's true. And also, yeah. uh, you got it. So, okay, here we go. There. He did not go out on his little stoop at his apartment where he shared his off-campus apartment with his roommates. He didn't step out there to get his Uber Eats and fall in a river. That did not happen. Okay, right. I want you to rethink that. Now, I'm certainly no MD, much less a psychologist, but I know that much. When I go out right, the talking. front door yeah. to pick up Uber Eats, I'm not going to fall in a river. Did he have a river by his house? <laughs> Did he have a river right there? You're going to see with the picture, it's not necessarily a river. It's a kind of like drainage ditch. Okay. So and they heavy obviously rains, checked that, right? I'm yes, sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They brought in the backhoes and all that already. Um, it, this is going to be one of those cases. Yeah, they're looking out in all these wild areas. It's, uh, it's just confusing. And once you get to the pinging bit, it's even more confusing. So. Yeah, yeah, out. okay. I'm gonna rule out suicide. I can rule out falling in a river. It's out, okay? Let's don't talk about falling in a river again. You know, ho hold on. I, I think it's timeline right. Joining me is Mandy Noel, uh, investigative reporter, News 4 San Antonio. Mandy, thank you for being with us. What's your understanding of the timeline? That's what I'm gonna be focusing on right now because that's how you start a missing person or foul play investigation with your timeline. Did you hear me in the open say I've got a critical 20 minutes? I think that uh, I think that Randy Harris, who's Caleb's dad, knows the 20 minutes I'm talking about. I'm sure you do too. But I want to get all of the facts I can leading me up to those 20 minutes. Hit me. You are exactly right. And that is a critical 20 minutes. And there's so many questions because in police zone's words, Vanished without a trace, it's a strange disappearance. So 1 a.m., and it's before that 20 minutes, Caleb is on a ring doorbell camera, some surveillance camera, with his roommate, a friend, and their new dog. 2 a.m., the roommate goes to sleep on the couch. Caleb, like Mr. Harris mentioned, preparing his fishing reels the next day. It's the last time his roommate saw Caleb. 2.44, and this is where that critical time starts. Two. Caleb yeah. sends a Snapchat, walking the new dog, 2.58, his phone turns off or it dies. Pings at his apartment complex. 3.20, that Uber Eats that he ordered. It's seen on the surveillance camera, but the footage, the information with the footage is kind of wonky. They're saying it could be a one hour kind of time swing. As you mentioned, the food's found on the doorstep the next morning. But the other thing to point out here, he wasn't planning to go anywhere he walked outside without his keys without his wallet and he walked Pause outside it. without shoes yeah. on there you go so Both i, I want to know what okay what were they doing prior to uh, to me what time was he planning to leave to go fishing because being up at like 1 a.m 2 45 a.m 3 a.m i mean was he leaving at like 4 a.m was he leaving really the fishing close to i heard was thing? afternoon I heard the fishing was afternoon okay. planned, if I hear, hear it correctly. Hopefully we'll okay. hear it again by the end of this, but I think I heard that. Uh, what about drinking? Fair right. Question. Were they drinking? I've or... never heard that answer. Okay. That doesn't mean I haven't missed it because I did kind of get involved. I don't know, if, uh, Mal, if you're out there, if you've ever heard that one, but I've this never This is just in the middle of the night, there. and so I was trying to figure out, like, why are you up so late? You know what I mean? Before you're... And know. it could be they are college. Okay, March 4th would have been Sunday night into Monday morning. Okay. So it's the end of a weekend. So it could be maybe they were finishing up homework before. Okay. Would Any he have had school before the fishing trip? I'm assuming, but it's completely me assuming. I don't okay. know if they do address. They may address that in here, but I'm not 100%. Sorry, positive. I I just... No, I, because I don't know good. that much about the case. Like I'm just no. like so many questions are going through my head. So, well, it's like this case, I mm -hmm. started out covering this case. And then when all these other cases came, you know, you can, your brain can only handle so much information right. at one time. 
So I kind of was spreading between them and I'm trying to go back now and mm, yes, look how pretty Sleuthy looks. Okay, so Click and Go Books has a good question. Does he own a does car? Own a car? There is, yes, he does have, I think it's a okay. truck and it's been looked at. The truck is there. His car, truck keys in the house. Um, His shoes in the house. Hello, spilled paint. How you doing, my dear? Hi, Avery. After other thing, Miss Avery. And <laughs> uh, um, everything, uh, his wallet left in the house. Okay. So basically another case is someone, it's almost like he had gone outside to get some air and maybe look around and all while waiting for, okay, the food. Right. And then something happened. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, UFO came by and pulled him up into, I don't know. I'm joking there, but still, you know what I mean? It just out of nowhere, he went missing. So, so um, weird. It's so, uh, Amy, if he had no shoes and didn't take anything, he probably went outside to get something, like going out to his car to get something. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good point there. That's definitely a good point there. So, but what we're starting to see the timeline here with the phone pings. Okay. Near the apartment. Okay. His phone turned off two minutes to 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. His Snapchat got to his friend at 3.03. Now it could have been sent earlier and it just took a while for Snapchat to get it through AT&D or whatever he has. Right. Okay. Um, but that peeing at 312 is one thing she questions a little bit more on because how the hell is the phone pinging if it's off? And dead? how far away is Williams Drive from his house? About a mile. Okay. If I, re if I recall that, I think they show the map here. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, a no, mile so. away with no shoes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You hit exactly <laughs> I'm ready. what was in the I'll back of my, my head. That's still the next. So that time, you're right. It's critical because it's just this small window where he was communicating with friends and family and then nothing. Hey, Ashley. Let's take a listen to Dave Mack, Crime Online. Harris and his roommate spend the evening outside in the parking lot with their new dog. It's a little after 1 a.m. when he heads back inside. He sends yeah. a Snapchat to his sister at 244. And at 2.45, Caleb Harris orders food through Uber Eats. When the Uber Eats driver arrives at 3.20 a.m., Caleb Harris is not in front of his apartment to accept the delivery, so the food is left at the doorstep. Okay, back to Red. I'm going to stop real quickly for Ashley's question. Yes, they do have a dog, um, and you can actually see the dog in the video that they're going to show in a little bit. Um... They had taken the dog out, it looks like, around 1 a.m.-ish. From Okay, one of the, the video, I think, is about 1 a.m. And then he took the dog out right before all this happened. So the dog did end up back in the house before he went back outside. That's what threw a lot of people initially. And all. So the this dog is, is home. Father. The dog is okay. Dog's with them okay. at the house and all that. Yeah. Well, thank because God, people, case closed. Yeah, we, we don't yeah. even have oh, to find him. Dog's good. <laughs> we got the dog. We got the dog for us that love our fur babies. Yeah, we're good. And also, uh, yeah, he's always stone faced, always so stone. Mm -hmm. totally. He is begging for your help. Join us. Help in the search for his boy. Again, the tip line 361 886 2840. Mr. Harris, can I just run through that timeline again with you? So he's outside. They've got a new puppy. Uh, it's 1 a.m. The puppy wants to go outside. They, they're outside with the puppy to TT in the parking lot. At that moment, uh, they're out there at 2.44. He sends his sister a Snapchat, I guess, with the dog. And there's no question it's 2.44. They're timed. Correct. Snapchats are timed. And, I might add, they Here's time the out once you open them. But I've got one more minute, and, and everybody may scoff, but minutes matter. Minutes matter. Mm -hmm. Even so, there he is. I just want to stop it there. He was the one in the white there, and they're going to reshow it again. If not, I've got it also on my shorts right now. But um, that's what he was, okay. You can see him come out. Okay, he looks fine. I've tried to figure out, because if you look at this, every time they show this video, in fact, let me take it back just a tad. Right. I swear it looks like they're looking at someone, 
see, it's almost like they're smiling and all, but I don't know if maybe someone else was parking their car or something at that time. Here, let me take it from there. Well, and, and hello. Yeah. Or it was somebody even standing on the do on the doorstep closer to like on the sidewalk closer to the apartments, maybe from that clip. You got it. And Gia, good question. From what I'm hearing, they're saying they're putting a timeline on this because they're trying to put urgency on getting information in case people are sitting on something, trying to think, oh, should I say something? Should I not say something? Whatever. It kind of gives a little bit more urgency that, hey, if you want this money, you got to make the call soon. Well, and it doesn't. So, so we've seen uh, in some cases the reward will climb, 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 climb. And, and like, you know, are people waiting for a higher amount sometimes? Where in this case, you know, you're not waiting for a higher amount. And in fact, it will just shut off at that point. Right. So, right. Exactly. Amy, surprisingly, do not talk heavily about the roommates here. And mm -hmm. I know that's everyone's first thing they're jumping to. Right. Um, I was able to get a little bit more clearance by looking around and trying to find stuff where one of them uh, was sleeping on the couch at the time. Another one of them went, went over to a girlfriend's and another left. And also, I don't know, but uh, Crystal is saying, I'm just now seeing this, but gut feeling they came to bring him out to whoever or get him out for some reason. Okay, oh, this puppy. Christola, this um, video that you're seeing was at 1 a.m. He didn't disappear till about 3 o'clock-ish. So this video was one hour earlier. The puppy needed to go potty there. Potty. Canine Rescue brings up a good point, though. They could oh. be just looking at the puppy. Yeah, that's true. It's that look of smiling at the puppy as they pet. Yeah, no, definitely good one. Good one. And click and go asked a question. I wonder if the police checked with the driver. Yes, they do. And we're going to hear about that. Like sometimes the driver is required to take a photo of the order. That is good. I hadn't thought about that. They do question the um, driver. That's when they find out it was a female. Um, and because that was their first, I think, thought too. Okay, let's see. You guys can kind of look through and look at the interactions. It was just very, just like anyone walking outside with their dogs. And I might add, they time out once you open them. But I've got one more minute, and everybody may scoff, but minutes matter. Minutes matter. Even one minute. At 2.45, he orders food through Uber Eats. Is that correct, Mr. Harris? Um, I really don't have the exact timeline on exactly when he ordered U Uber Eats. Uh, we do know that the Uber Eats uh, was picked up from the convenience store. Uh, two Lunchables, a Red Bull, and apple pie. Typical, typical for Caleb. So there you go. Two Lunchables, apple pie, and Red Bull. So that's what he was going to eat for dinner, for lunch the next day. So. Um, we believe it was delivered around that 320 mark because or yeah 3 320 mark because they it was picked up at the grocery at the store you know like 217 or something like that okay what did he get two lunchables uh, two lunchables uh, uh, apple pie and uh, red bull okay and kid that's food. normal he would go to school uh be done by noon one o'clock uh Get to the back of the apartment either a friend or a roommate and grab their kayaks and they'd have that was their lunch for the afternoon so there's your answer sleuth not sure if you caught all that about school they go yes. to school get off at around noon and then go and their plan was to go fishing the next afternoon so and you know they'd be out till before dark Joining me now, Assistant Chief Todd Green with the Corpus Christi Police. Assistant Chief Green, can I confirm with you the Uber Eats time? And I know one minute may not matter to a lot of people, but if I saw, for instance, just hypothesizing, another car come into the apartment complex at 2.45, that time would matter. 246, that time would matter. Can you confirm with me the 245 Uber Eats order? Uh, yes, that's correct. And it, it arrived and confirmed that uh, it was delivered at 320 in the morning. We identified the driver, uh, a young lady. We interviewed her. 
uh, and she did not report it, seeing anything suspicious at the time. Um, and uh, there's nothing to make us think that she had anything to do with uh, his disappearance. She did, she did not see okay. Caleb. Yeah. You just gave me a lot of information. I know it was a short statement, but that's a lot. Number one, the moment you said a female driver, I can tell you right now, the driver's not responsible. Statistically, a female is much less likely to perform any violent act. Bingo! She's gotten some really good cases lately. And uh, I was actually happy when this case got covered by her because he wasn't getting nearly the coverage she really needed, to be honest. So I was happy about that. So Nancy is on it. That's for sure, Roberta. <laughs> Period. Not happening. Okay, so she's there at 320, and she doesn't even see Caleb, correct? That is correct. She um, she did uh, report seeing one other vehicle leaving the parking lot. Uh, we believe we have identified the driver of that vehicle and also uh, have eliminated that individual as a um, suspect. Okay, right there. Uh, Assistant Chief Green, hold on. I don't want you to publicize the name because then, you know, thousands of angry people would be you know, coming down on that person as if they were the kidnapper. But can you just tell me a little bit, like, why were they leaving the apartment complex at, at 3 o'clock in the morning? Who were, Did they live there? Were they visiting? Were they leaving for an early morning they shift? Were, why why it, were they was, leaving? It was an individual who lives, actually lives in San Antonio and uh, had come down for the weekend to visit his uh, girlfriend at those apartments. And we're not 100% sure. And he had sure, to drive all the way the back. Timeline matches, the timeline matches very, very closely. So we believe that's the vehicle that she saw. Uh, that individual told us the same thing, that he had left the apartments about 3.30 in the morning. So, uh, so in the, dis the description. If he is walking, he could have logically made it that one mile distance if he walked away. Yeah. Um, it's just hard to think about him with no it's, shoes walking away. That's the thing. It's hard to think of him. No shoes. Um, yeah, definitely seems weird that it does show you a lot of the kids, especially this age kid being up at three in the morning is normal. Okay. And I guess like that's, yeah. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess the only other thing that I'm thinking about is, like, the dog is home. So mm -hmm. he didn't go outside, like, chasing the dog or anything like that. No. No. And uh, it looks like at some point, if he took that pic, because usually Snapchat is like, you take the picture, you send it right away. So that right. would mean when they finally get to showing that one picture that that was where he was at least at one point there um so yeah it's just so mm. weird it's we've had a lot at the 3 a.m yeah 3 a.m witching so really weird but um yeah a lot of things happening early in the morning within these things and this girl lit this girl this sorry i'm reading crystal and i'm like girl yeah no it's <laughs> not a girl it's a guy and also um there's nothing that shows anything that was going on and that's the thing it does sound like he was going outside maybe getting something out of his car or just getting out i don't know if he smoked maybe taking a cigarette or something like that while waiting on food i don't know i don't think he smokes i don't know though i'm just mm -hmm. guessing ideas right now so. hmm. okay i just moved us over to 1.25 because i gotta be somewhere at 6 30 tonight <laughs> so here we go shoes and dogs yeah that's it exactly so yeah, yeah canine, it's the same with us we don't wear shoes in hawaii okay mm -hmm. it's very common i go outside without my shoes all the time if i know it's going to be short but if i know i'm going to walk halfway down the block i put on yeah a shoes. mile away is a little bit far without shoes yeah. that yeah. that was my thought whenever i was like a mile like that's that's a bit that's a bit yeah. of a distance without shoes yeah that does not not at all Okay, mm -hmm. hopefully 1.25 is good for us. We'll see. He didn't see anything. No, he did not. He, he saw a vehicle coming into the apartment complex, which we believe is the Uber, Uber Eats uh, delivery person. Gosh, 
This just keeps getting more and more odd. Okay, that story makes perfect sense to me. And if he's leaving his girlfriend's apartment after visiting the weekend, he's got to leave at 3.30 in the morning to get back to San Antonio on time for a job. It's highly unlikely a guy is going to leave his girlfriend asleep in bed, taking off for a job, and suddenly decides, oh, there's a guy I don't know. I think I'll kidnap him. That didn't happen. Okay, he's out. Let's pick back up where we are. Guys, she works take a listen out. to this. We know his phone pinged at three, a little after three, um, but we're not sure um, exactly where he was or if he w he had contacted anybody as with that ping. Phone actually quit working at 2.58. Okay, let me follow up on that. Um, we all are familiar by now with the Brian Koberger investigation. Can I tell you what launches a timeline? The fact that one of the young ladies inside that home on King Road ordered, I believe it was a DoorDash. So we know she's alive and well. I think she got the DoorDash at that time. It's mm -hmm. like looking at your watch. All of this is digitized by time, location. But his DoorDash was still out on the door. So yeah. we don't know. But I also, I was smirking for a second there because dad, if you, if you look at him, whenever, whenever they pull him back up, take a look because he yeah. is sitting there so perfectly still that you would think it was like a still photo. Like he is like, <laughs> he's like, just, I just noticed things like that. I don't uh, know. Hi, Leo. Hi, Chase. His, hey, Chase. How you doing, Chase? And Leo, welcome, welcome. And uh, yeah, his parents have just done an amazing job with coming across Okay, they're there searching all the time. They're interested. They want to keep him in the forefront of everyone's mind. But to mm -hmm. be dealing with this day in and day out, I mean, oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I so know. So shoes are confining. I agree. They are. And also, okay, dokes. Let's look at how still he is at 1.525 time. Mm -hmm. All of that, you can count on it. And here we're getting the same thing, just like this ping. Now, I want to circle back to Randy Harris. This is Caleb's dad. And for everybody on the panel, let me remind you, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle with Charles and Camilla. If you have an idea, spit it out. Now is the time. Mr. Harris, I want to talk about what no you high just tea. said about the ping. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> so we're getting a ping at 3 a.m. But you're not sure, as you and your wife are saying, where he was at the time of the ping. The phone quit working at 258. Did he turn it off? Did it run out of juice? What happened? Uh, we really don't know that for sure. Um, his phone, you know, because he's out all the time, the phone does go dead pretty pretty quickly because he's, he's, you know, just using it all the time. Um, the, the ping was at 303. Uh, it was a, a Snapchat picture, I believe, to one of his friends, and it was on the bridge. But that again, the timeline the doesn't quite add up. Uh, they were able to get, from what I understand, through AT&T, um, an additional ping around 312 uh, down the street. So again, the phone was off or turned off, but there was some other activity and it may have been an IP ping or VPN ping. I really don't know. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stop that right there. And yes, I agree, Crystal. I love seeing, I love it when I see people come up on the panel. It's just awesome. So, okay, so this shows you right here, the 312 ping is way down here. Um, there is a hotel, if I remember right, in that area. A um, couple different other commercial area. Uh, here's where he lives. And uh, so that looks less than a mile to me, but that's what they were saying earlier. So, well, maybe it is, who knows. Um, but interesting, how does how do they get a ping at 312 if the phone died or was turned off? So my question is, mm -hmm. did the Snapchat picture of him on the bridge have any words with it? Or was it literally just a picture of him on the bridge? There because are words. Okay. The problem is they haven't been released. Some people say mm. that people have shared those words. And so what um, are they allegedly saying? How do I say this? And I don't know if this is actually real or anything. Okay. If you don't want to type say it, then at, you can type it in so that I know, but um I don't mind. Hey Brutally, how you doing, my dear? F Hitler. Literally no idea what it means. People have 
That's why we're not sure. Is it real or is it someone who is trolling everyone with that? Um, is And it could be a troll. It could be an inside joke. Okay, it could literally be an inside joke. I have no idea. And it's never been released officially. Okay, wait. I'm sorry. You have to say it again because because the baby came in. So what what did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> F. Okay, the word F. Hitler. Like how Hitler. What? Yeah. And that's why I'm not sure. Is this a troll who's coming in and saying this? Right. Okay. Because or it sounds like real? it. Is it an inside joke? between him and his friends and all that is it who knows what yes he's like say it again say it again and uh anyone who knows me uh I'll well that's just that weird time. though because yeah i Why? part of me wants to think it's a troll myself because it makes no yeah exactly in the bushes no one likes hitler of course we all say it okay uh but Unless there's an inside joke or something that anytime it gets horrible weather or something, you, okay. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it makes no sense. Is it, is it Gia's birthday? Gia. Yay. Here we go. First of all, how will we love her now? Happy birthday. Oh, wait, before I say it, everyone type in the name Gia, G-I-A in chat. And when it comes time for me to say her name, if Sleuth wants to sing along, she can sing along if she'd like. And uh, hit send. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gia. Happy birthday to you. Birthday. Happy birthday, Gia. Say happy birthday. Yay. Say happy birthday. Say it. They can, you can, they can hear you. You don't have to hold it. <laughs> She's like trying to grab it. I'm like, no, just leave it there. <laughs> oh, kiddo, happy birthdays are the best. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. Happy birthday, my dear. And, uh, and wow, that is a good, hey, you know what? Life starts after 50. I seriously believe that. But yeah, I can say that. Here we go. <laughs> Let's make sense of what we're hearing right now. And remember, Caleb's dad has been sifting through all the facts. He's throwing out some jargon not everybody's used to. But luckily for us, Todd Shipley is joining us, uh, digital cybercrime expert, former detective sergeant, and author of, listen to this, Investigating Internet Crimes, an Introduction to Solving Crimes in Cyberspace. And you can find him at darkintel.info. Todd Shipley, we need you now more than ever. I, because I've been investigating Caleb's disappearance, I understood what Randy Harris just said. But a lot of people may not explain what he's saying because I'm not quite sure. I understand how he is ordering Uber, and that's at 2:45, and then his phone is pinging down the street at 3:12. Did the phone have to move? Oh, Randy, has the phone been recovered? No, it has not. We we've done. A tremendous amount of searches right off the bat. Uh, and the police uh, were, were there with cadets and with uh, search and rescue and, and lots of search and rescue people from San Antonio. And that was one of the biggest focuses is, you know, obviously finding Caleb, but trying to find that phone. Uh, even yesterday, we were we had the search and rescue team out of San Antonio. Hey, Seal. Okay, two things. First of all, alcohol. I don't know. I have not heard anything on that right now, um, but there could be info out there that I just haven't come across yet. Um, as for, do I have her sped up? Yeah, I had to put her, tell me if it becomes really problematic guys. Um, and I can switch it off. I kind of have it there because I have auditions tonight. I have to audition someone for the new show that I'm AD, uh, assistant directing for at 630 in an hour and a half. And I want to make sure we make it through this. So, but let me know if it becomes too hard for people to hear. So, Hey, Lone Wolf, how are you doing? And, uh, uh oh, we love our troll. Okay, we love our lone wolf here. Love you, my dear. And, uh, okay. uh literally in sewer drains with cameras and ladders looking uh, for, for the phone just, just to try again. Um, Cat Mama, that's what I was told. I personally am thinking it's a troll who said that. Um, uh, but that's what they're saying the words on the last Snapchat were. 
I just, ha I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. But who knows? Does life make sense? No. Can okay, I, can I jump in? Uh, you're Andrew. on. Yes. Um, that information that we had uh, originally came in on uh, an emergency request through at and because, because it was a, a potentially endangered missing person. Um, that data that we're getting it, right now, we're sharing that with uh, two of our federal partners, the U.S. Marshal Service and the FBI, as well as uh, our local team, our local uh, uh, our, our organized crime unit, which has the resources to go through all this uh, digital data. And uh, the quite, the bottom line is, at this point, we don't believe that that is an accurate ping. We uh, are working on the theory that he never left or his phone last was uh, located right there on the street, right in front of the apartments, uh, right near the uh, bridge over. Okay, stopping this right here. And Sleuth, I know you're dealing, you're being quiet and all that, but I think you could probably, you're listening in though right now. She's trying to get a kiddo to go to sleep. So um, anyhow, there were two, okay, this is the last Snapchat that was sent, okay, location-wise. There were, okay, another Snapchat that was sent to his sister earlier. Okay, so the one that you're hearing to the sister was something else. This is the last one. This one was received by a friend at 3.03 in the morning. And this is that little gulch area. It's not really a river. They say if it's been raining, yeah, you got a lot of water going on there. But otherwise, it's, yeah, you, you could walk through it, no problem, stuff like that. Um, but this is the last photo. This is the one with that. It's got a caption to it, but it's never been released. And uh, so but that's what you're looking at here. So everyone's now gotten to see that. Um, yeah, let's get some green names. I like green. If only I could change it to purple, I'd do it in a minute. But yeah. Drainage ditch uh, where, he, where he sent that uh, Snapchat photo at about 3.03 .03 in the morning. So right now we're working off of that. We don't believe that he ever traveled over to Rod Field, which is about a mile away, a little over a mile. So, uh, okay, well, let me decipher what you just said. Do you think that yeah. seal? Thank you, my dear. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much, my dear. I'd show you Cassie, but Cassie, oh, actually, Cassie isn't sleeping now. She's growling. Say hi and thank <gasps> Amy. Got it. Amy got the members. Okay, you can go back to sleep. Thank you, seal, and welcome to the Ohana, my dear. Yes. 312 ping down the street is erroneous. That's that's our um, that's our working theory right now. That uh, that, that data it was uh, pr pr preliminary data that came in very quickly. It, it appeared to show him over there in that area, but uh, at this point, uh, we don't have a high level of confidence that that's accurate. We do okay. feel very so strong. Can you tell me about, this? Do you think it's wrong, or you just don't know? Uh, at this point, we we feel like it's uh, it's not accurate. Wrong. Okay, Correct. that's really yeah, important. Thank you for telling me that before I go down a rabbit hole with a cyber expert. Is that you, uh, Todd Shipley, jumping in? Yeah. Go. It, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that the phone found when it was looking for um, cell towers a cell tower to talk to, and so it could have been a mile away. It, the chief is right. They're looking through a whole bunch of other data that we don't have yet, which would have been the things that you know we would all start to look at, which is the cell tower data and trying to figure out where things were. But you know, trying to geolocate somebody with just one ping is not um, you know necessarily possible or accurate. Accurate, and the chief is correct. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the larger set of data that they've got from the cell towers, trying to figure out what other cell phones were there. Who else could have been there pinging those towers at the same time? So there's a lot of data that they're trying to walk through and understand because those cell towers collect a tremendous amount of data. So going to stop that one there. So now we know that 312 most likely is not real. Okay, because that's one thing for quite a while people were thinking, was he walking down there? That 312 was causing a lot of confusion for people. And uh, so, yeah, Nancy can command a room. She knows how to pull it off. And uh, um, so, oh, interesting canine. Very interesting there. And uh, um, so chances are it was, and we already know. Snapchat took a, a couple minutes for it to get to the other person also. So something was going on in there where it was just trying to reach connections. And then when the phone went down and they've never found the phone. So they don't know, did the phone get turned off? Did it die? 
okay, there's no way of knowing right now what actually happened at this point. I, can okay, I, can one I thing back? you just said, Todd Shipley, uh, that I, I just want to follow Great up on. Question. When you said the cell phone was trying to find a tower, quote, to talk to. In other words, the cell phone yes. is trying to find a tower to get a connection. And it could be 30 feet away. It could be a mile away. So it's pinging Correct. all around, pinging. And that's a cell phone trying to get a cell from one of the towers. Um, I Correct. hear somebody jumping in. Go ahead. Please do. Uh, it, was, it was me, uh, Mr. Harris. Um, I, I want to I really explain something, too. The police have done a phenomenal job in this case. I mean, these, these guys are amazing and and not questioning anything that they've done know. at all. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're outside the bubble. We're looking at all different kinds of things. And, and. You know, those were areas where, you know, we went with blood, bloodhounds, we went with the police and, you know, so we're, you know, interpolating and just suspecting along with everybody else. So, and we certainly understand those cell tower I images could be even a mile from that location. It was just kind of a hot spot. And so I really want to stress, you know, how happy we are with what the police and the other authorities are doing because they, they really are, uh, they're, they're just killing it out there. They're, they're, they're doing a good job and, and I want to make sure that, that we're backing them 100%. Absolutely, because you know what, Mr. Harris. Okay. Usually, yeah. When a cop makes a headline, so so, so my question is, yeah. yeah. And so my question is, the location on the bridge where the Snapchat photo is, does that fall into that one mile radius where the ping is? Uh, I think so. That's the area right outside. And yes, I did hear. By the way, initially they were saying that they had the location of the Snapchat where that was taken, and it makes sense there. I have okay. no idea why he's sending that one out. Why would you take a picture of a bridge? Only way well, see, I can cut. Yeah. Well, uh, so that yeah. just does make me wonder a little bit. I mean. Why? Yeah. Could there have been a possibility of him unaliving himself? And like that was like his final like, hey, this is where I was type of thing. Like right. that does make me wonder. I mean. What else would be the purpose of that picture mm -hmm. like that? And no. then maybe his phone just survived in the water a little bit longer. Like, well, and I, I hate to even think like that, but that makes me wonder. You know what I mean? No. And that's it. By, by the way, good night, Chase. Um, that's what a lot of people were questioning, especially when we had that ping that they were saying. Now they're saying, don't think that was a real ping after all. But people were wondering, did he fall into the okay either fall or unalive and the phone kept going and it pinged until it finally okay um that was one of the things the only thing is the police and everyone are saying there is no way whatsoever anyone would have been able to unalive themselves off of that bridge because it's not it was, deep enough or it's not it's, deep enough uh, okay they said in rainy seasons yeah it can get water going through it and all, mm -hmm. but it's more of just okay. A, yeah, no, it's and a that's drainage good to know. Ditch. And that's yes. good to know, especially as they're saying, like you know, and I are, are already obviously mm -hmm. said, you know, it doesn't make sense to order food and then go do something like that. But but it was just a question that I had because of like the the picture on the bridge. That's just weird to me. It, it's and that's what mom and I were trying to figure last night. And yeah, that was someone in here made a comment about was he trying to give people a message with that? Okay, was there a message connected to taking that? And that'd be nice if we knew what it really said then. The other thing is, could he have just been out and okay in the area? That it didn't look from that map like it's that far from the house. Did he just was like, oh wow, this is really cool well, weather. I've and was it just a delayed pictures. Snapchat and it wasn't even taken at that time frame? So I guess that's, that's the other possible. thing. That's possible. I've literally been known to just take pictures of, oh, look how pretty the moon is with the cloud in front of it or stuff like that. Um, I've actually sent a couple like that to some people just the other day. So I don't know. And I wish we could get in his head right now at that. So yes, patriotism. At least you and Seal don't have to be in the replay crew tonight. So you think it was a clue. Most hunters, fishermen know how to protect themselves and know safety. That picture was a clue. Something happened that night. I have a hard time believing he just wandered away or something like that. But I mean, I was like, I've never heard of any issues with drugs or anything. At first, one point I thought, well, could he have gone to meet with someone for something like that? But I've never heard anything that leads me down that road. So. 
Anything else, Sleuth, before we start up again? Nope, you can let her rip, Tater Chip. Let her rip. Here we go. It's because he did something wrong, right? Uh, nobody ever says, like, do you call your cable company and go, you know what? I watched the end of a miniseries last night, and you did a great job, you know, making my TV. No, you call and go, the cable's out. Fix it. So nobody ever comments on how awesome LA law enforcement is. And I really appreciate you saying that because it's so rare that we get to hear that. Um, okay, so everything we know about part of the timeline is now upended. And that's a good thing because that helps me refine. Okay, wait, I got one more thought. Yes. I got a question. We're I was a just lot thinking, I'm sorry. I, I only, I, well, yeah, and I only, I only just thought about this, but do we know that it was for sure a picture that he took through Snapchat that was taken at that moment? Because with Snapchat, you can upload a gallery photo. And send it. Oh, that is Gia. Yes, they have shown the picture. They'll show it again, and I'll make a, a point of showing it to you at that time. Um, that's true. That's true. It's like, what Do if it's in the person sure? we're just talking and he uploaded a gallery picture? And if they yeah. don't have his phone, they wouldn't know necessarily that it was already in his gallery. Right, right, exactly. Unless he's uploaded photos or something like that. But that'd be the, and they don't have his phone. Um, who did he send the photo to? It was one of his friends. So it's just a friend of his, um, a buddy. And also, um, you know what? There's so many different possibilities with this right now. Um, he did send another picture. Um, so he sent two different Snapchats that night, it sounds like. One was of the dog, and he sent that to his sister. This one that we're talking about shows a very foggy view of the a bridge. And that's the one that was the last sent. Um, yes, they do. They do disappear right afterwards. And uh, so, which you either have to go taking pictures, screenshot of it or stuff, unless there's another, I don't use Snapchat, so. I do know there's a map of where you took it, um, and it's supposed to disappear afterwards. And the Snapchat that Caleb sent to his sister, I assume, with the new dog, where was he when he sent the Snapchat? Can you see in the background where he was? Um, yes, it appears he was walking through the parking lot of the apartment complex. It's actually a... It's... Good night, KK. Love you. Saying prayers, my dear. Love you, love you. Short Snapchat video. And it appears he's in the complex at 2.44 Agreed. when he's walking the dog. But then at 3.03, he's actually just outside the apartment complex on the, the main street that runs right by the, the complex. And there's a small bridge that goes oh, sorry. Oh, that was over me. A, a drainage ditch. So this is uh, 1 a.m. That's, that's okay, I want to be clear about the bridge. There's, okay, here's the photo. So I'm going to pause it for a second for those who haven't seen it yet. This is the Snapchat photo they're talking about that was sent. Okay, received by his friend at 3.03. See, um, but here's my question, yeah. though. Like, what if what if he took this while he was walking his dog, and then they were talking Earlier. about the fog or something, and yeah. he uploaded it from his gallery to Snapchat? You can do that, and it still yeah. looks like a, a photo that you're just kind of taking and sending. You know right, what I mean? Right. And without them having his phone, they wouldn't know if it came from his gallery from... or if it was whatever. And, you know what I mean? And that's why they want to find this. This phone is key right now. If they could get the phone, I think there's a lot of different questions that they could answer at this point. Uh, KK did mention before going to sleep that this is actually how Texas looked for almost a whole week. And uh, so, and that is something when you have weather that you're not used to you're going to take a picture of it, okay? Me, when it's foggy and you got the moon coming through the fog, it, to me, it's one of the prettiest, coolest kind of atmosphere pictures you can get, so. Um, but yeah, you okay, Seal is saying you can go to location on Snapchat and click on the highlight blue area and see all kinds of posts where people are, oh wow. I heard them talking about that in a trial recently, was it okay? Yeah, it's really so. Because a lot of people in. are like, oh, did he fall in some deep water? That's not what that bridge is, is it? Okay, here we go. Well, it's a drainage ditch. When we have heavy rains, it, it, it certainly could be a, a, a drowning potential. But at the time of the, his disappearance, there was only less than a, uh, in that area, it was less than a, a foot of water in it. 
and we searched it thoroughly with our dive team. Uh, Texas Search and Rescue brought in their canines. We swept it again with the canines. It was swept again with uh, the uh, bloodhounds from the Department of uh, uh, Corrections the brought their canines in. So it's people. been thoroughly searched and no sign of, uh, of Caleb or the cell phone. Randy Harris, I feel very strong. So that kind of bring anything else to you, um, Sleuth, about so it's less than a foot deep of water at the time. Uh, yeah, that makes so much so, more sense. Yeah. So that's yeah. not even a possibility either anyways. No. No, even his phone in like, well, a phone might be able They probably to would have drift, found it, right? But yeah, yeah. you're going to find it. You're going to find it. And they did a lot on top of that. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't see that. He did not go to that bridge and fall into the one foot of water. That's not what happened. I agree. So the Snapchat to his sister, and for those of you that don't know about Snapchat, it's not like you're texting a message. It's a picture. It's a snap. And it's supposed to, I guess... Um, in the moment, in real time, send a picture of what you're doing that expresses what you're doing at that moment. Um, and, and it's the big way of communication right now amongst preteens, teens, and students. So again, where was he, Randy, when he sent the snap to his sister? Uh, from what I understand right there at, uh, oh, for, with the sister, uh, it looked like it's, he was just in the parking lot with, with taking the dog for a walk. Okay, and that was just before 3 a.m., Okay, guys, take a listen now to more of what we know regarding the time. No, Just no so drugs, you, no yeah. drugs or mental Ill illness, brutally honest. Yeah, nothing that we've seen or heard of from anyone. Timeline. Here's Jackie Howard. The timeline for Caleb Harris is traceable up until 2.58 a.m. Caleb Harris is on security cameras, ring doorbell cameras around his apartment, and is on his phone, which is pinging at his apartment. According to the investigators at 2.58, Harris is at his apartment when his cell phone battery dies or is turned off. The Uber Eats driver arrives at 3.20 a.m., and Caleb Harris is not there to get the food. 2.58 a.m. to 3.20 a.m., a 22-minute window of opportunity, and in the foggy early morning hours of Monday, March 4. 21-year-old Caleb Harris vanished. Todd Shipley joining us, digital cybercrime expert at darkintel.info. Todd, I mean, when I look at my Life360, it tells me my son's phone is at 10% or my daughter's phone is turned off. So we can't tell if his phone died or whether it was cut off? Well, I don't know who else was connected with Caleb and whether the family had something like 360, which is a great app for families. Um, but at this point in time, they know what they know, which is the phone went dead because AT&T has those records and the phone stopped pinging. So it's going to be, they've got a limited amount. We don't have, like we normally have in these cases, a consistent pattern of a phone um, contacting the towers and letting them know where they're at. In this case, it stopped. So we have to work back from that time I wonder... and try to figure out what was going on the phone before. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it was yeah. like a hard stop or if it was a... Um or if it was a soft stop because like if it, is it you is it him powering down his phone type of stop or is right. it the phone is destroyed type of stop because that's one of the things that you know whenever the phones are broken right. they have like a different type of of way that stop. they show up on there is stopped so i wonder if it's that That'll or if it was just like you know it died or he shut right. it off yeah, because from what I'm understanding, they're saying they probably won't know unless they can get the phone. And uh, which I guess I, I thought AT, a couple of companies could tell you if it actually got shut down. But yeah, I don't know on that. Good question. Really good question. Um, so yeah, yeah, brutally. Exactly. If you're going to order a pizza, you're going to be waiting for your phone. Okay, if, waiting for the food, no matter what. What 360 is he talking about? Um, there's a app called Life 360. I think it's Life 360 um, that you can get with your whole family and all, and you'll all know exactly where everyone is. And in fact, as a teenager, you actually go and disconnect it so your parents don't know where you are kind of thing. Um, but yeah, Life 360 is actually a pretty good app. I've actually used it before. So when I wasn't hiding from mom and turning it off. So for that to see if there's anything that's of, of relevance to the, the case and who we contacted, who the messaging was to, you know, there's a lot of things that the phone will tell us that at and may have already given law enforcement, but they're looking for all those things, trying to identify any source of, of what happened. So uh, Assistant Chief Todd Green with us, Corpus Christi Police. Again, thank you for being with us, Chief. Uh, I, I'm now the water is getting money for me. 
and I know mm -hmm. that you and Randy Harris and Mandy Noel can clear it up. Was he near that bridge that night? Yes, we, we certainly believe that based on the Snapchat photo he sent to uh, one of his high school friends at 3.03 in the morning. So a high school so friend. So we have another entry into the timeline. He sends a Snapchat to a friend at 3.03 a.m. And he's at the bridge? Correct. It, it, it's, we're very confident that he was there at the bridge in front of the apartment complex. So when we're talking about the bridge, there it is right there, okay? Mm -hmm. It's kind of really only a bridge to, to fall off on one side. That didn't happen. That's where he is, out walking the dog. Where is the dog, Randy Harris? At that point, the dog was back in the apartment. So let me under, he must have gone out to get the food. Okay, yeah. so he's alive and well, sending a Snapchat right there at 3.03 a.m. The Uber East driver arrives at 3.20 a.m. So we're now down to a 17-minute period. Randy Harris, it, the bridge that we're seeing, is it adjacent or part of the parking lot? No, it's, it's literally right at the corner of the complex. And I was going to add, um, when the phone went dead at 2.58, it went dead across the board. Uh, Snapchat, um, I, I have fine friends and I also have fine, you know, the fine utilities, you know, so I can look at both of those and see, and both of the timelines were identical at 2.58. Uh, and then everybody else's Snapchat also uh, located him at 2.58, uh, right, kind of right there at the corner of the complex. Or So based off of that, he definitely was right there 258 right at the bridge and his phone just shut down completely okay it wasn't just certain apps being shut down or anything like that it seems like it just everywhere just, yeah. that's so weird like why the bridge why yeah. the bridge and why the cryptic message and then the fact that he's not in the picture of the bridge did he nope. even take it and that's it. right yeah, so that's exactly. the question too did he even take that picture of the bridge or did he, did somebody else just take it and send it? You know me in assumptions, but yeah, could someone literally have mm -hmm. grabbed him and done something, snapped the picture to make it look like thinking, oh, it's a bridge? People will think he tried to kill himself or something like that, unalive himself. Could that have been? I don't know, but yeah, it's something. How do we know it was him exactly? How do we know it was him? Um, it's yeah. Or restarting it. Yeah, he didn't. Re did he start booting it? Okay, turning it down to restart it and didn't get it restarted. A lot of, I don't know if it's an Android or an iPhone. That I do not think I've ever heard. But it could be out there and I just haven't seen it yet. Um, a cell phone only tells us someone with his phone was at the bridge. And is it a waterproof? Yeah, or Yeah, because I was thinking that he was in the picture and then seeing the picture. He's not. So it mm -hmm. could have been anybody took it. Yeah. And there's no reflections or anything. Sometimes at least there's a reflection and you can kind of get some idea, but there's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a foggy night. Uh, okay. Looking out over this bridge and that's it. So yeah. Or on the bridge right there. Okay. I've got a question for you. If his phone goes dead at 258, how does he send a snap at 303? Yeah. That, that is a, that's for the forensics to figure that out. Uh, we can't, that's a timeline thing that we, we, it's an anomaly uh, because Snapchat from what I understand is immediate. And you know we've got we've got a, a few minutes there. So again, is that a cell phone, a cell tower issue? Is it a AT and T issue? Is it a delay with Snapchat? We we really don't know. It. We feel like he may have done that, you know, before the phone went dead, but we can't confirm. Oh, okay. You mean like suddenly I get a message that somebody sent yesterday? No, I don't think and it'd be just... like that. No, no, I think. Okay, you know, Todd. Simply, what how, what could it be? Because well, the reason I'm interested is because he's on this bridge. He's at this bridge. Is that the last known communication with him at that location, not standing out in front of his apartment? So can you explain why he may have sent it at 258 and then it arrived at 303? Sure. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons technology-wise that that could have occurred. Snapchat is a great little tool, but it still uses a centralized server system where it's got to go to one. I'm stop this for a second. Click and go. Thank you. Thank you for supporting her. Yeah. Anyone go check. I mean, if you want some fun, fun live after we're done here, anyone else? Her lives are awesome.
they can be sent back to whoever the um, sender is sending it to. So it could have been AT&T. He could have been in a dead spot that it didn't get picked up right away, and it took a minute to send. I mean, technologically, there's a lot of reasons why it could have been delayed send. Even if the phone had died, you know, minutes before, he could have sent it, and it just didn't show up till till a later point in time. Okay, so that's that's not unusual. All right. Everyone, the mystery it, it, is that doesn't you know totally explain it. But I mean, the point is, it could have happened, or he could have sent it at that time. We just don't have enough you know facts and evidence right now to know. Without having the phone, you know, we don't know for sure. Well, to Assistant Chief Todd Green, do we know if the Snapchat was sent at that time at three o three? Did the phone die or get turned off at two fifty eight? Do you have any idea where the phone was turned, whether it was turned off or it just went dead? If it went dead, why didn't he go in and plug it up? I mean, what do you think, yeah. Chief? Well, we, we're still looking at that and we're, we're puzzled by the timeline as well, uh, as Mr. Schneider said, and, and we've, we're considering the options that he mentioned that it, he may have sent the Snapchat before the phone went silent. We try not to say dead. We don't know if the device was turned off purposely or if it just ran out of uh, power. We, I, I don't think we'll be able to determine that until we actually uh, are able to look at the device. Well, there's itself. the answer to my question. I guess um, I should just are, let uh, it <laughs> Something, and you know what? Th that's what I loved about this because they kept pulling up things. And uh, Cristola, head over there. Head over. There. If you haven't been there, I know you, and uh, you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy. But um, no, no. I this is so weird because I always thought there'd be a way for phone companies to be able to tell us was it shut down or was it just powered off okay but i guess not i guess that's not something you There's, can do without yeah i think it probably depends on the type of phone because i know that's one of the things that they were discussing during the um kylie rodney case the type of shutdown it was right it was one of the like details that they were pulling out because because of how hers shut right. down right, right you know what i mean um so i don't know if it's just a specific type of phone or a specific phone carrier or whatever. Um, be. But there is a difference. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah, yeah, it's really, there's so many, could it be an abduction, something you saw? Um, it just it happens so quick. That's what gets us is how quickly it happens. So yeah, I don't think we have that tech, tech yet. And I do think if his phone was dying and it went off, if he noticed it went off, he would just turn around. He's right there at his house and recharge it at that point. Okay, unless he expected he was going to go back in in a couple minutes and he's like, ah, whatever, I'll just charge it when I get back in and go to bed. So deepening as parents of a missing Texas A&M student, Caleb Harris, reveal he seemingly vanishes after going out to pick up his Uber Eats order. We are following every piece of digital evidence that we can. But what do we know uh, regarding anything his roommate may have said? To Caleb's dad, Randy Harris, what does the roommate say? Um, they're, they're, their hearts are broken. I mean, truly, um, these are kids that have grown up with Caleb since first grade, fourth grade. Uh, they live in the same apartment complex, live across the street, and live with him. Uh, one of the roommates is graduating with a nursing degree, will be uh, moving out, and they've already signed a lease with uh, actually, the boy in the video there, uh, the third boy uh, in the red or maroon shirt, um, he'll be joining them this this fall as a, as an additional roommate, which again is another another friend from New Braunfels. Uh, the, the the friend group out of the New Braunfels area is really tight. About seven or eight kids down there from the school that they graduated with, and and one of his roommates he's been with since uh, fourth grade football. You know, just you know, all these kids are very very tight because we went to a small Christian school there in. Uh, New Braunfels. So their graduating class was, you know, 40 kids. So it was a, a very close knit, you know, a lot of these kids are like brothers and sisters. The apartment, I understand Chief Todd Green was carefully searched. I assume his vehicle was that searched. Could Is it be. still parked there, Chief Green? Yes. Uh, that was one of the things we did early on in the search, try to determine if he left, uh, willingly left the uh, complex, why would he do that on uh, such a foggy evening on foot? And it, it didn't make sense to us. We checked the vehicle just to make sure that it was operational, that it had fuel. It did. Uh, so that certainly added to the um, to the question of why would he be uh, going anywhere on foot at that time of night in those conditions. Uh, as we mentioned, it was extremely foggy that night, which uh, has also complicated the investigation. Uh, uh, surveillance video that we have recovered is uh, is not the, uh, the quality that we would uh, normally expect, uh, but the fog certainly uh, made it much more difficult.
Yeah, I've wondered so far, we've only been given that one surveillance video. And I would think there'd be a lot more surveillance video for that area. Okay, you got a lot of kids in the area. Do they have things going on right outside of that parking area and the parking lot? And but so far, we've only gotten that one video so far. So and nothing further on it. And I'm not sure how close the video is to the actual apartment. Okay, could they actually see the apartment window or not? Difficult to see things. And, uh, and I assume that comp- all of his social media has been combed? We are in the process of doing that, yes. Uh, it's time consuming. Uh, we are, we've issued over, uh, our, just our, uh, our uh, team here, our team has issued 16 uh, search warrants for electronic uh, search warrants for data. Uh, the U.S. Marshals, who's working right alongside with side of us, have issued seven search warrants. Uh, the FBI has, uh, has helped us out by uh, accessing uh, uh, financial data. So we're looking at it from every possible angle. And one of the things that's probably a little unique in this situation is that when the data comes in, um, we're not analyzing it just by ourselves here within uh, our department. We're immediately sharing it with uh, the marshals, the FBI. Uh, we're constantly uh, meeting with the Texas Rangers. We're sharing data with them. So when uh, when the data comes in, everybody is looking at it, analyzing it, and uh, yeah. providing us with uh, any kind of leads that they believe we should follow up on. Uh, we have a really David good Harris team, cyber team here, a forensic cyber team here, but we're also reaching out and using our uh, federal partners, federal and state partners. Um, couple things here. Uh, first of all, I do have to say, this community has come together while we've all been looking at like Riley's case and Elijah's and all these other cases going on Sebastian's, this community, I actually New Braunfels, okay, I have family in New Braunfels. And so even as far as that, they've got people going from New Braunfels down there to help search. So they've had a lot of search efforts going on, people coming out and doing a lot of work on it. Um, FBI, like they said, Texas Rangers, they're looking from every angle at one time. And also, yeah, did you have an idea there? No, I'm I'm just, I'm honestly pleasantly surprised that, that they, how many communities lately seem to be really coming together for these missing Mm -hmm. individuals. It's, It's really, it's refreshing to see people care. Yes, yes. You go to the Facebook groups and it used to be, I go into a Facebook group and it was all discussion and assumptions and, okay, all that type of thing. And now you go to so many of the groups and it's like, okay, how can I get over there and search? How can I give food to the people who are searching? Or how can I help out in this way or that? Really, it's a different approach lately and it's been really nice to see. Mm-hmm. and all so um but parents have been very very involved in this um was it planned or an opportunity that's the question they even get into where they talk about um looking at his text messages who was he talking to who did he know okay because honestly kidnappings the majority of the time they are someone who knows someone okay might not be their best friend but they know that person from some right so well right and that's if you're looking at kidnappings and then as far as like foul play goes it's almost always connected to you if it's something foul play yeah. Yeah. um true 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 hey danette how are you doing my dear uh i wonder who all of the uber eats would have access to knowing where the driver was delivering to. they actually can they track them until they sign mm-hmm. out of the app like they have to turn yeah. off the app completely to stop getting tracked yep yep that's <clears> true that's true uh, make a logical theory based. Yeah, and that's how uh, we all try to do it here too. Okay, I know Sleuth is the same way. Okay, yes, our minds can go to assumptions, but let's use really good facts that we're going on. What did Danette have? The roommate walking behind him seemed odd to me. Oh, okay. And uh, so there were definitely, they were having fun with the dog. I don't know if, I thought I had heard that the dog was fairly new to them, but I may be wrong on that. Mm-hmm. Randy Harris, was Caleb, to your knowledge, in a relationship with anyone? No, uh, his focus was, uh, you know, on on a school, hunting, fishing, uh, playing video games with his roommates, pretty much a, a homebody uh, and very consistent. Um, he's had a couple of girlfriends, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary yep. for a college student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to 
piece it all together, guys. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. What we do now is continue keeping Caleb in the light. I mean, keeping him, you know, he's out there. We feel like he's out there and, and we're going to get him back. Uh, we just got to find him. I'm, I'm curious, what is your theory, hey, Randy? That's a, that's a hard Did one they? to okay. answer because, you know, there, we, because we don't. So, sorry, if they had just gotten the puppy that day, that brings in another whole thing. See, I thought I had heard that it was new. I didn't know exactly how new, though. That brings in another whole thing. I mean, anyone who's gotten a new pet and something like that, I mean, that brings a certain level of joy to the household. From, mm -hmm. Okay, it's not, yeah, it. Yeah. You know what, though? I, I I get what you're saying, but mm -hmm. but it's not unheard of. Like, and I I don't know how many of you guys watch Sister Wise or have ever heard of Sister Wise, um, but Janelle's old one of her sons just recently mm -hmm. unalived himself, and he had just gotten a kitten, like oh, really, a couple days beforehand was posting on social media with his cat and like you know what I mean, like he was all right, excited right. about it and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and. And wow. uh, yeah, he sent very concerning text messages to his mom and some of the producers and stuff like that. And and then wow, and then yeah, just, and so she, right, and it and just solve all your problems. It doesn't. No, and so I guess I would just say that, like, yes, like you, we think about all these different things that people have going for them, and we think about you know the happy moments in their life and, and the happy possibilities and things like that, but we really truly don't know what someone is going through. Um, we really truly don't know. Depression is one of those things that a lot of people mask. Yeah, Many, many people look happy, healthy, you know, sit there and interact with their friends and family as if nothing is wrong with them on a day-to-day -day basis, but are struggling deep, deep down inside with, with, with these demons that are attacking their brains and so i guess i guess like we can look at caleb and we can say there's there's no signs and there's know. no evidence of anything but it doesn't necessarily mean that there was nothing at all there does that make sense that, you can never rule everything out right absolutely and, yes uh, garrison had a was having a mental break well oh, he wow. was and there was there was concerns like he was very open with his mom about the emotional things that he was going through. He was also former military, so he was also dealing with some of that. Yeah. And so so there was a lot of a lot of things going on. I'm just saying that that you don't Garrison know. Uh, right. And Garrison is a person like I said he was open with his family about what he was going through. There are and plenty of people else. out there right yeah. who aren't. Men especially, okay, mental health is one thing we've talked about this before where we do not talk about our mental health. It's been kind of one of those things hidden for how many years? Okay, you would never tell people if you were on an antidepressant or even had depression. Now it's getting a little bit more open where people will. But as a male, it's even more hidden. As right. females, we tend to be a little bit more open about our feelings and stuff. But as a male, especially, I think, to some degree, teenagers even more so because, well, he's in his 20s. Right. But at that but young point, adults. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I, could, well, but, I could see that. And so those years, you know, are also when the onset of some very serious mental health issues typically show in males. And right. so that's something to keep in mind also, because we, we really truly don't know what was going on inside of his head. And so, yes, there is this aspect mm -hmm. that foul play could have happened and, and it's more more likely the situation honestly in this yeah. in in this case that we're looking at but there is still that window of what could have happened and i agree if right. if they if he would have been alive to himself they would have found it by now especially since right. the water was only a foot deep right exactly. he didn't jump off the bridge and that's where exactly. my mind was thinking at first like okay right. this could be a thing but right. obviously that's that's discounted you know no and that's it that's it there's always and that's the one thing we don't know what happened unless we were sitting there with him we can't rule anything out and if the police are doing their job they don't rule anything out unless they have like every single proof set of proof right in front of them because once you start doing that you're you've decided what happened without knowing and also you got to be careful on that so and all that. no good good point thank you for that actually good point yeah so, you don't have a true north in this case and we don't know don't. Uh, really what what has happened and there's no 
the, the evidence and everything parents. that they're gathering. Um, you know, I, I, I strongly feel like the authorities are, are finding True North. Um, for us, uh, we, we really don't know. You know, if his, his keys are there, his mm-hmm. wallet's there, his truck's there, you know, his shoes are there. The only thing missing is his cell phone. He was barefooted and he vanished. Um, so we really don't know whether he came upon something that he didn't shouldn't have seen or he's the kind of kid that would go out and help somebody change a tire. So, you know, we just don't know. Bingo. It's kind of weird that in the bushes you made that little comment, not saying this is what happened, but we're just told by his dad that he's the type of guy who would help someone change a tire. Okay, he's there trying to help people out. And uh, so you can start seeing things that could be some potentials. And uh, hopefully that's what the police are looking at. And I'm sure that the police seem to be doing an amazing job in this case. It's just tons of questions. So. Can I, I just don't names? understand. Yes, please do. So one thing that I, I thought about this, if we're working on uh, the theory that this was an abduction, a couple of things that I'm sure law enforcement is looking into. The first thing is there are random abductions of people. That happens. But a lot of times when an adult is abducted, um, they're abducted by someone who's had contact with them or knows them. I've seen and been involved in cases like that. So I'm sure that law enforcement is combing through uh, this young man's text to see who he was talking to, um, obviously through the social media. Um, but are there people that he had contact with that other people didn't know about? I mean, all these theories, I think, are probably under investigation and and also giving this kind of a national voice. Are there people who aren't in that local area who had contact with him through social media or texting or emails or things like that that could maybe help provide um, other information uh, to look at other potential people that could have been involved in him that maybe no one knew about. You know what, you're right, Dr. Jeff. Uh, guys, you're hearing Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky joining us, author of Dark Sides. A random kidnap- kidnapping Dad. is rare. And when you say someone that knew him, we mean that in the loose sense of the word, someone that had right. been in the class with him, somebody that was a checkout person at the grocery store, somebody that had connected with him online, you know, maybe in a gaming right. room. Most of the games right. that people play, they're not playing by themselves. They're playing with somebody in cyberspace, a real person out there somewhere. Thank you. It could be any of right. these people. I don't mean uh, their best friend or their roommate or their girlfriend that really know them. It's more that someone could know of them. You're absolutely Correct. right, Dr. Jeff. And the scary part of that is you don't know who they are. They may not even right. be using their real name. Mm-hmm. Randy Harris, did he play online you mentioned games i mean my son loves them did caleb yeah, actually, that, actually that night um one of his best friends that, that lives in uh uh colorado and i want to correct you he's got a job in alaska not colorado oh, so thank you that's pretty exciting you know for him uh coming up this summer and uh, anyway but he, yeah he was on the phone for we because uh, i immediately uh got the phone records uh from at t you know just like just like anybody else could do and so i started looking at all the phone numbers and the texts and joining who do I see on here that doesn't make sense or I don't know, or I'd punch him into my phone because I, I do know a lot of his friends. Um, and this particular friend's actually in Colorado Springs going to school and they had been on the phone playing video games, but but without headsets, they, he, they normally would just call each other. So he was on the phone with him for uh, 71 minutes earlier that, that evening, like at 10 o'clock. Have you guys been able to amass ring cam, any kind of cam from neighbors? Um, actually, brutally interesting you brought that up. I think it got, I don't think it's connected to it, but at one point people were wondering about that because there have been some other disappearances or deaths in the area over the last few years. However, many times, yeah, they're the same age range, okay, guys, things like that, but they're tied to the water because this is really close to the ocean. So you get a lot of people in the Gulf of Mexico, okay, and they just get in too too deep with water, okay, they get in a boat accident, whatever else. So I don't know if it really was that, but there was some discussion at one point on that. Uh, yes, we're the, the police have done a great job of that as well, and we've been uh, assisting them. We're still doing that today, just going back and double checking, make sure that we haven't missed any uh, surveillance cameras or ring cameras, um, those, sorry, um, those are critical. The, the one o'clock image that you've been showing, that was a ring camera from three or four houses or apartment complexes, not complexes, but little duplex things down the, down the road. Okay. So yes, we, 
highly encourage if ever everybody get out and look at their cameras and take five minutes that's all it takes and uh, uh i also encourage because we're finding cameras that only that delete everything in three days you know change your change your settings <laughs> to 60 days so for future you know uh surveillance so you got it guys you're seeing shots of kayla ah! harris missing this kid is scrubbed in sunshine. I, there's just no other way to put it. And Mr. Harris, I just don't know how you are getting up and putting one foot in front of the other. How are you and Caleb's mom managing? You know, it's it's hard, um, but we're also a family of faith and we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, uh, you know, that's where our, our strength comes from. I cry a lot, but my wife is my rock. My daughter is my rock. My in-laws, my family, the church, the people in New Braunfels, the people in Corpus, um, just an immense amount of strength. I mean, just to have somebody donate a helicopter yesterday and today to just go search and make sure that we're covering every inch of Corpus Christi we possibly can in the hopes of really not finding him. You know, that you know, we, we, you know, that's what we're doing. We're just making sure that, you know, we're doing our part to aid in the investigation. And we have- I'm just gonna stop it there for, first of all, okay, just seeing how parent he's holding himself up and then when those emotions hit, they hit, and you can see them. Um, what they were saying about the helicopter, I actually, day before yet Monday, um, for a while, I thought maybe they were ready to, they had found him, because there were a bunch of videos being shared out of helicopters literally right on top of trees. And mm -hmm. on it turned out, instead, it was more, it was dad who was out, in the helicopters trying to make sure that they were checking all of these areas wow yeah and uh, um kelly i live in corpus and it's beyond concerning all of us are terrified with kids his age to let them out of our yeah i i gosh i wouldn't even be able to fathom and so many it's a college town too okay it's not just like a tourist town like we've got out here too but you also run into the thing that a lot of parents are having to let their kids go to school and they're nowhere near, or maybe they're in the area, but they're out on their own for the first time. Right. And is something else going on? Okay, along what Brutally was saying earlier. Yeah. Any thoughts, Sleuth? No, nah, it's just freaking devastating. Like these yeah. parents, man, I don't know how they do it. And just what he said, you know, we don't actually want to find him. They don't want to find him in the water or in the area or in the wilderness. Like, no. But they, they're still doing their due diligence to make sure that's not where he is. Right. You know, but God, let him be alive somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's got to be so hard. It's got to be such a, I guess, yes. with us, like, every time that we see searches happen in these cases, we're always thinking, like, there's prayers that they find the individual, but then at the same time, it's like, I hope they don't, you know what I mean? Oh, but the not yeah. knowing, the not knowing is always so much harder. And so if he is deceased somewhere, I, I pray that they can find him soon so that this family yeah. can start their, their journey to closure and justice or, or whatever is going on. Whatever but if be, not, yeah. like, Caleb, please, like, your family's Just devastated. Find yeah his family is it, it's they're devastated the community someone i was trying to find it um there was a prayer that someone wrote in one of the groups last night and i actually read it to my mom and we actually prayed the prayer together and i was mm -hmm. talking about all of that that we don't know what the truth really is in all honesty only caleb whoever's might be involved if someone else is involved right okay and god are the only ones who know right now okay and please it's just it was yeah like what's in the dark i hope it comes to light yeah exactly exactly so yeah so many people that have offered boats so many people offered food we've got volunteer search people we have friends that we've known you know for as long as our as long as our entire lives that are just involved heavily in in supporting us and you know we just feel we feel the love we feel the love of, of, of christ just uh radiating and you know, giving us the adrenaline, really, just to keep going. But my wife, she's my rock, and she's just been super strong. And my daughter is uh, just, she's amazing. Her birthday was, you know, Thursday, 17. I'm really curious, since the family has a foundation built in faith, would he have been drinking? 
I really wish that we knew from the roommates, you know, kind of the events leading up right. and if it was something that was going on, because here, here's the situation. And I don't want to say, I mean, automatically we think college kids, we think, you know, maybe drinking, not maybe all kids, not all right. college kids but are that way, especially, oh, yeah. especially ones with foundations and faith yeah. or parents with foundations and faith and things like that, regardless of what religion they are, they are right. that leaves that opening that he might not have been a drinker. Like that might not be something that's even playing into this. Um, and so I, I really wish we knew a little bit more, but then again, on the other side of things, if it, if he was, you know, raised in faith and maybe even newer into drinking right. and things like that, that can be, that could be something that plays into it. Exactly. You know what? I'm going to show you guys something. I haven't uploaded this to myself, but I was looking for the prayer a second ago mm -hmm. and I came across a video, uh, not a video, a picture of that bridge in daytime. That's the bridge during the daytime. Okay. So it gives you a much better idea of what it is we're looking at. Make so, yourself the biggest person real quick. That's a good idea. That would be Because <laughs> I'm like looking at the little Hollywood like, square like, mm. what's going on with that? So Just put it on solo okay. mode, yeah. <laughs> there we go. So so this is actually, there we go. Okay. Look at that. There's rocks underneath of it. Look, and I'm like, did he jump off of it? It's exactly. like four feet from the ground. <laughs> and, uh, so I'll have to download that and I'll share that out. Um, But that, yeah, that shows you a huge, here again is the picture itself. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, totally mm -hmm. changes the picture. For us no, I agree, point. Nicole. And so. that's what I was saying. You've also seen kids go buck wild. And that's what mm -hmm. I mean. Like, could he have even been newer into like a rebellious yes. type of like that's all that's all something to play into i know yeah, i know that it. lots of people who have faith drink and that's why i said i don't know which type of religion they are but that is something to consider because there are a lot of religions that do not believe in drinking alcohol yeah. yep and i do know okay in fact originally i thought my i was worried that my niece actually graduated with him or, or was a year different um but she's also very close with her faith okay she was part of the camps okay each summer and all that even nowadays she now does it herself as one of the okay counselors and uh, so yeah she goes out and she'll have a drink here or there but it's not like she goes crazy right and uh, on the other hand yeah you do have kids it's like when when i was in high school i went to a catholic school i could not cut class Okay, I just, it was hard to pull off for me. I got to college and my first year I was cutting class left and right because I could get away with it all of a sudden. And, uh, and then I had to finally realize I needed to get a degree. So cutting class is not good. But that's part of growing up and learning those different right. things. So. I guess my point is it would just be nice to have a little bit of more insight into who it's, he is as a person, not yeah. necessarily from his parents, but from the people who he was surrounded with mm -hmm. living with in this college storm, right? The people who were with him that day, kind of more insight into his mindset leading up to the events that occurred. And, and not because like I'm accusing him or them of right. doing anything or anything like that. I just want more information. Yeah. And no, I, t I totally understand what you guys are saying. I know that there are a lot of different religions that think well, that alcohol way. is okay. Yeah. I just was saying that this is a possibility that that could play into things. Cause initially we were saying, I, I was saying like, well, he could have been drunk. Like he could have yeah. been but maybe we not, jump to that. Right? Yeah, we, we jump to that. To but now, yes. like, I, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of not religious people who choose mm -hmm. not to drink either. It's just, exactly. I think with college, we make that that opening assumption that maybe, maybe not he, might not be a thing. He also was in. This was his third year. I think he had done two and a half years of college. So that also can change things because usually it's that, like I said, that freshman year that you go crazy. And uh, so by the time you're in your third year, you're a little bit more focused. Okay, you're still partying, trust yeah, me. Yeah, buckled partying. down and ready to finish. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're, you're like, okay, it's kind of like your junior year of high school. It's the one that you have to buckle down during. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, oh yes, and the communion wine, trust me, trust me. <laughs> 
I used to teach first communion and trying to get the second graders the first time they had to try one. Oh my gosh, it was so funny to watch each year. So, okay, here we go. $95,000. Oh, let me stop real quick. Was he in a fraternity? Not that I've heard of. Okay, he's got a small group, but I may be wrong on that one. I really need it. These are some great questions. And all, but the place they lived was off campus. And it looked like there were just a couple of them that were roommates who were paying rent. Okay. But what was interesting when they did that uh, question about cameras, that video footage is from a few houses down. So there's got to be more video footage out there. But like he said, okay, a lot of people, their footage has been deleted by now because it auto deletes. Mm -hmm. And then it was foggy and all these other things. So. I love that freeze frame for Nancy. How long do you think it's going to take us to get through the last 40 seconds? No, I'm exactly. just kidding. <laughs> actually, she stopped and she actually, we're almost at the point where we don't even get need to listen. To but, <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. There we go. Right there. If oh, you know, or you think you know anything about Caleb Harris, please contact 361-826-2950. 361-826-2950. Our prayers, our energy, and our efforts go on. Help us. I am going to stop it there. We got the phone number in and I wanted to get that in the prayer bit. And all uh, because I am, that, um, yeah. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this episode of Nancy Grace. Good job, Nancy. <laughs> she actually did a good job too. I mean, it was literally two days in a row. Okay, uh, cases that we've been following and stuff like that. Can I do an update on them? I'm trying to get better at updating you guys about cases we've been, for how long, and Sleuth knows this, I would do a different case every single week and then I never do updates because I just wanted to share new cases. But I think we both have caring. gotten to the point where it's like, okay, wait, we need to slow down on the quantity yeah. and put more quality behind it yeah. because we were we were both doing case after case after case after yeah. case and it gets mentally exhausting as well exactly. as for not only for us but also for our followers yes and so it also takes a lot of time to constantly relearn new details and yeah. so and then there are a lot of these cases that have updates or remain missing mm -hmm. but there is still still updates that need done and reminding that that they are still gone um right. and so i think that's kind of why both of us have kind of switched up like how we're doing stuff a little bit after getting feedback from our mods and from other people like mm -hmm. you're, you're going too fast there's okay. too many you yeah. know and a lot of people want to know more and because mm -hmm. we don't cover necessarily all the popular cases and stuff people don't know they don't right. know what has happened and we kind of follow because you know what you really do start caring so yeah patriotism i i get what you, you really start caring about i mean the other day it popped up that uh kamari um who was killed by her mom's um pimp and uh the two of them have said that they were guilty and uh, wow. i was like finally yeah it's been years yeah. you remember that case mm -hmm. and uh so yeah, so definitely, and yeah. Megan Boswell's doing court tomorrow. Evelyn Boswell. Evelyn, yep. That's yep. tomorrow. So. It's amazing how the years go by, but yeah. Yeah, Seal, my night's just starting. I got a meeting in 30 minutes on Zoom that I'm going to be getting into. But uh, you have to wonder with so many uh, fraternities getting shut down if some of these aren't hazing related. Yeah, not sure about this one, but interesting thought there yeah um because we've had a lot of you usually don't run into a lot of college age guys okay we do get a fair share but not like it's been recently something's changed there so um you will be praying to sleep through 3 a.m yeah we don't want you disappearing on us girl not at all so, <laughs> so I think one thing is for yes. sure if you're going to go if you're going to be awake at 3 a.m., make sure you have your shoes on because the last couple people have not That's had the their key. shoes on. Yeah. Yep. Of course, then again, if you go missing in the middle of the night with your shoes on, I'm going to automatically assume that <laughs> Pete had something to do with it, Seal. I'm not going to lie. Yep. 
That's it. <laughs> like, why would Seal have her shoes on you at do, 3 a.m.? If you feet? don't. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know I caught myself saying that the other day. I was like, well, wait, wait. But if they had this, then the, okay, yeah. So <laughs> there you go, cat mama. You shall be protected and sleep through the scary hour. That's it. And if you want scary stuff, guys, I don't, let me see if I, I don't know if she's live right now, but let me check real quickly. Um, oh, it's Thea does some really fun paranormal stuff. She is still live. I'm going to ask if anyone wants to have some fun, spooky, paranormal type things, please go over there and let her know that I have sent you over there. She's just starting her channel. And guys, her stuff is so good. I mean, she did some stuff the other day about uh, sleep paralysis and stuff. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. So please go over there. But in the meantime, Sleuth Mom, thank you so much for hanging out with me today for our Wednesday Live. No, oh, thank you so much you for having me, and uh, thank you for answering my five million questions. I appreciate that. Well, usually you have all the answers. This is a case that finally I had all the answers. So. Absolutely. You got it. And thank you to Seal for gifting the one membership tonight. I love you, my dear. And to all the new people who have joined us, thank you all so, so much for joining KK is still in the house. Yeah, we're all one big sorority fraternity over here. There we go. Yeah, she's heading off to bed. <laughs> I love you, my dear. So I will not sure. I will not be going live on Friday because I will be at Kauai Con, which is kind of like a Comic Con thing. Um, I may try to go live tomorrow, but I'm literally working from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep right now. So I'm not sure if I'll make alive tomorrow or not but just keep an eye out on your notifications so love each and every one of you and i will talk to y'all soon bye bye, bye.